Hello, we are back. Yes. Okay, cool. We're back. Uh, no intro this time, guys, because we're just doing it with. I don't know. It's not going to be a good joke. Moving on. Um, Ryan, you make it to the manor house. A little bloody uh, with pockets full of nothing. <laughs> I haven't gotten his name yet, so you can make it up. Oh, awesome. I introduced good. myself to him. Um, as you you make it there, there as I said before, is a guard posted on yeah, a horse. I'm like There's a, a big blanket staff, over the horse, waiting, and the guard has a, a very over. heavy coat over him as well. He sees you coming from a long ways off, and so is ready for you as you approach. And as you do so, he says, "Ho there, traveler! What is your business?" <clears throat> I'm here to see your lord. And I look down to my bleeding arm. Uh, I ran into a little bit of sorcery on the way, so perhaps a some assistance may be, may be needed. I see. Uh, <laughs> come in, he I says. About? And he raps on the gate with his spear. Uh, and the gate, there's no answer for a moment. He hits the gate again. Hey, wake up, you fat oaf! And eventually the gate starts opening up and there is a heavy set man uh, shivering in his like black wool coat as he like pulls the gate open. Um, you can hear the chain mail jingling underneath his uh, heavy coat. All right. I and give him the a nod horseman and... says, just head on up inside. Yeah. We're not expecting guests, ask. so you might get uh, some questions asked of you. I am full of answers, and I walk on past towards okay. the manor house. Was this like a walled gate around the entire outside, or is this just Pal a, a wooden palisade okay. around the the entire like top of the hill? And then open on the inside of the gate, the hill continues upward, mm -hmm. and you notice there's also like little uh, stairs leading up to ramparts around the palisade wall, and the 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 hill goes up, and you find the the manor house up there. It also looks like they have been shoveling the ground because there is no snow on the inside of the wall. Um, it's all been taken care of. But you show up inside the, at the manor house at the front yep. door. I knock on the front door or I probably check to see if it's unlocked first and then knock. It is unlocked. All right. I will poke my head in. Hello. Uh, there's a, a couple of couple of soldiers standing in chain mail, warming their hands in front of a fire, and they see you come in and immediately like, pick up their spears and uh, <clears throat> state your business. I'm, my quarterstaff is in the snow out front mm -hmm. by the door. With I the lantern in, hanging on it? I step inside, and brushing the snow off. Uh, I, I'm here to see your lord. Uh, is he, has he risen? And I walk past them nonchalantly, join them at the fire. They kind of block your path with spears, a little, oh. a little bothered that you're so casual about this thing. They say yes. Tell, tell him. Put, tell him, Mister Fenric is here. About, about the snow. They nod and uh, hand him one of them. Oh yeah, and that, never mind. One of them never goes mind. off to fetch him. The other one says a. Uh, Warm yourself by the fire here for a moment. And we'll set you up in a parlor. Yeah. I take a seat by the fire and I actually take a look at the wound in my shoulder for the first time. I get, okay. It's pretty, pretty deep, but. Yeah. I'll he survive. comes over and I, takes a look at it too and goes, what did that to you? <clears throat> I look in my pockets to see if the ice is at all intact. Yeah. I mean, it's cold as balls out. It's still frozen. I, yeah. So I'm going to go set them away from the fire. And I just like <laughs> put these ice shards on. Is there like a table or something? Yeah, there's a bunch of tables. They're all very richly say, decorated sorcery. and carved. <laughs> and sorcery. I to, I, an ice grenade. And I point to these. And it's out in the trees, just out front. Mm. Here I thought I'd have a nice, nice, safe walk to speak with. Do I, I look, around, them. I look around to see if I see any name or crest or something on the wall? Like, is there a big crest over the fireplace? It's like, house something, blah, blah. There, there's a, a picture, a painting of a, a knight in like full plate mail with his 
helmet off, but like in the matter, like in the middle of like taking it off dramatically and his hair's flowing backwards. And in his other hand, he has like a, a giant two-handed sword that he's holding. He's got like this red hair and the, the helmet has a big red plume on top. Um, and he's just like I want to picture handsome with a long like mustache. And he's just like, um, and at the, the bottom, there's a nameplate that says, uh, Sir Bedwick Brightball. Brightball? Mm hmm I think I named a paladin something like that in your one shot. It was Brightcock. <laughs> <laughs> okay, no, this is Bedwick Brightball is the, right. the name on the have... picture of the cool knight. Isn't there a Ballbanes in one of your other DMs? Ballbanes is from Final Fantasy Tactics. Really? <laughs> Yeah, okay. you had a Sir I might have stolen it for maybe. something, but yeah. yeah. <laughs> awesome. All right, so I, I mean, yeah, I'll answer. Does he have any further questions? Or otherwise, I'm gonna wait around for to see if the other guard gets back. When you you say like ice grenade, because uh, one of them floating crystal thingies. You seen them? I, I'm sure. yeah, I've seen them. They they move across the plains every now and then. We ain't approached any of them yet, probably for this very reason. So Lord thought they might be dangerous. Yeah, you get too close and they'll chase you down. Had to smack this one with my stick. Well, it's good to know that a peasant like you can beat one. Let's not be that dangerous. <laughs> a peasant? I mean, you are a peasant. <laughs> By definition. So much more. Yeah. Um, I'll probably, After if it takes more than a minute or two, I'll probably pull out my, my little papyrus and start and finish up my notes earlier about the floating crystal yeah a, a but, few minutes yeah. later what the guy returns and you know ushers you into a room to wait for uh lord brightball mm -hmm. and they give you some whiskey to warm yourself with oh, yeah. and uh, about 10 minutes later the the lord comes on in he's the same guy that you saw before uh mm -hmm. and he is dressed in like a, a very fine robe looks like a like he just got out of bed or something. It looks like a nice bathrobe, like a really thick bathrobe, but it's embroidered with like, it's a green robe with embroidered uh, silver and gold strands through it that has like the family crest on one side and like a uh, decoration of vines and uh, leaves intertwining down the other side. So uh, and he has a, a little pipe with him as well that he seems to be smoking. Um, yeah, and I rise with his bathrobe. He has a long sword on his side too. Nice. Does it? Is it like on a belt? Does it look like yes, like a, a real a normal belt. Does he always wear it, over, he always wear it with his with his uh, bathrobe? Do I think, or is this just a special gesture? Like, does it look like he threw it on, or is it? I mean, he looks very well put together. Okay, so it looks very you know, it looks a little strange, but he also looks very at home with it. All right, I rise. My he lord gives you a nod you. and then sits down in like the most comfortable chair in the room and gestures for you to sit again and says, so Mr. I... Fenwick, mm -hmm. to be honest, I... I didn't expect to ever see you again. <clears throat> well, you almost didn't. I say that, that ice grenade damn near blew me to pieces. Hmm. Hmm. I assume you've heard tell of them. Yes, we've seen strange ice crystals floating across the plains. <clears throat> I believe they are associated with the larger sorcery of this whole storm. Um, I hand really? him a stack of papers. So, you don't say. Yeah, I have it, it investigated the causing of this uh, disturbance in the in the local weather and concluded that it is most likely the cause of an evil wizard. Uh, rumor has it that there is a magical crystal ball uh, being manipulated from the maw. Um, mm. I believe that that there will be a wizard up there that is the source of this this disturbance, and he must be mm -hmm. tracked down and and dealt with if you wish it to stop. Are you up for that task, or? Should I find a uh, <clears throat> more suitable man for the job? There is no man more suitable than I than to lead this expedition. However, 
I expect a little bit of muscle would make the um, make the job much easier. Quite These so. Wizards can be rather twi- tricksy. I, give them I wouldn't expect probably inappropriate a man way. like you to make your way through the mall without a well-armed guard traveling with you. It can be a very dangerous place. Um, <clears throat> he reaches into his robe and pulls out a bag and sets it on the table before you and says, you may use these resources to procure yourself as many guards as you see fit uh, to make it there. And do you wish to... And he, he narrows and his then... eyes for a moment and says, and I do recommend you hire many. If you die, this money will do you no good. I nod. Do you have any wish to send any of your own men, or shall I just report my findings once once the mission is completed? Uh, my men are suitable for the task, but you may wish to find more experts in the mall. It is a place that requires its own sort of soldier, its own brand tracker. Uh, I think you will find more suitable mercenaries in Keygate. Or maybe you can ask Dagon to help you out. <clears throat> if you could persuade him. Yes, indeed. I have a few uh, a few experts in mind. Well then, at your leisure, you may peruse my report. Um, I believe our our business here is done. My lord, until I return. Uh-huh. I, Good. I attempt to be much more polite this time and give whatever the appropriate bow is. And, uh, you give a bow, and he stands up and reaches out to shake your hand. Shake his hand. You size him up as I do. He probably got a firm, crushing grip. Mm-hmm. He's got Long very intense arm. eyes that, and just kind of a, a dominating presence that seems to overpower the room. Um, he seems very, what is the word? Um, presidential. <laughs> All right. Okay. Sure. Uh, and okay. then he I... walks off, still smoking his pipe, and disappears into another room. I pick up the coin purse and take my leave. Okay. And I give the guards a wink on my way out and retrieve my quarterstaff and head on back to town. Okay. You can follow your footprints back to town. Very easy peasy. Yeah, I'm. Um, I've got my quarterstaff ready, and I'm on high alert for any any ice crystals. You make it back to town, ice crystal I laugh to myself as I think of the melting ice all over the, the waiting room at, <laughs> <laughs> at the nobleman's house. Yeah. Um, but you make yourself, you make your way back to town without incident, okay. and you arrive right. at the goofy dog. I would like to count the money in this purse you... at some point discreetly, probably walking, well... As, or maybe I'll pull into like pull behind a tree once I'm closer to town. Pretty sure there's no ice ambushes coming and count out the gold. There are ten gold coins and one hundred silver coins. Nice. Um, I guess I'm not drinking any water on this trip. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see what my. I mean, technically, this money. I'll make one of my merchant... mercenaries. But, What's that? You know. No, 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 I meant my weight. Oh yeah. Oh, okay. Mercenaries will carry. Mercenaries can carry some gold, but I can make a mercenary carry my rations or something. No. Well. All right. So I head back into Dagon's. Um, mm-hmm. Have many people woken up yet, or is it still? It's still probably pretty early. What happened to the music? Uh, no, mo- the, most people have woken up. It's been a couple of hours since then. Um, there are a few people sitting around eating food. You see Rockbreaker kicked back in a corner, um, drinking a lot of, you know, just, he's got a couple of glasses that are empty around him and a big plate of food that's half eaten. And he's just like, Ugh. it's like 10 a.m. Yeah, he sees you coming. <laughs> right, yeah, I... you come, he's like, Fenric, how are you doing? Rockbreaker, my old buddy. Yep, yep. I hope you're not too busy these days. I got just uh, enjoying the good life. <clears throat> I got a got a journey planned. 
you, I lean in close as if I got got a secret or a deal to let him in on. You ever been to the mall? Been through it a few times. Venturer <clears throat> like me has been all over this place. You uh, looking to spend some more coin to get there? <clears throat> I believe I, I spent enough on you, but I'll buy you some food and drinks along the way. Well, I ain't got no reason to head up there on my own. <clears throat> Aside from them uh, pretty earrings in your pocket, probably by now a nice sack of gold. <laughs> it was a nice sack of gold. He says, patting his belly and pointing to the drinks in front of him. I don't have you know the life. You make it easy come, easy go. I said, <clears throat> well, I will be happy to pay for your accommodation along the way. Um, but I, I do believe you owe me a bit of a favor. Well, I mean... <laughs> Services are bought and paid for, right? Mm hmm. And I bought and paid for damn near a week of your time. Ain't my fault you only used a day of it. Uh uh uh. I am using the entire week, Rockbreaker. And I give him a pat on the back and I, and I call over a couple of drinks for the both of us. Hoping he doesn't protest and just follows me out of town. He grumbles under his breath a little bit, and as you, as the drinks come over, he glares at Diagon, and Diagon kind of gives you a smile, and he pulls out a couple of coins and hands them to Diagon. No, I pay for the drinks. Oh, yeah, you pay for the drinks, and yet Rockbreaker still hands Diagon like two gold. <laughs> um, All right, how much do the drinks cost? It, it seems that they, they, there's some sort of bet that has been settled here. Whether um, or not I would remember to call up <laughs> that, that debt. Yeah. Right. Uh, Diagon gives you a smile and a wink as he walks away. <laughs> Rockbreaker says, "All right." I was that, uh, he was actually going to tell me to fuck off. <laughs> no, because there's uh, no so, way. I can... Yeah. W when are we leaving? <clears throat> uh, you ready now, or you want a day to prepare? <sighs> Guess no time like the present. Oh God, my belt's gotten walk... a little bit big. Got to poke some new holes in it. He pulls out a, a knife and starts poking holes in his belt as he, you know, to <laughs> loosen it up a little bit and stands up and fastens it and goes, oh, oh barely ain't been this big in a decade. All right. <clears throat> Cracks his back. Let's go. He grabs his axe, tosses it over his shoulder, drinks a beer, and gets ready to go. All right. Um, I guess we head immediately north. I'll fill him in along the way. Just make small talk. Tell him that I have been hired to hunt down an evil wizard that is causing this foul weather. Okay. Who I believe to have taken residence somewhere in the Maw. Um, I suspect we will have to hire a specialist once we arrive in Keygate. Um, and I'll, I'll inquire if he has any contacts up there or suggestions. Does he have appropriate web clothes to be traveling? Yeah. Okay. He looks well prepared for this. Alrighty. I don't know if it's just me or if there are problems with these audio files, but they're not working like they used to. Shit, I need to gain HP before I... Is Diagon going to be pissed at me if I make him wait a day or two at Keygate <laughs> before we venture into the mall? We'll, we'll see. find out. Oh, come on. You're not hearing this audio at I'm, all, are you? I'm hearing noises. It sounds like birds tweeting, and I know that can't be right. Well, fuck, I can't hear it. Can you just not hear it? I, I get... Laughter? It should sound like It sounds like traveling. Yeah, road. it's like... Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like a, a jingling of chains and shit. Mm -hmm. There we go. Yeah, yeah, this is... yeah. 
So you guys are making your way through the snow. There's a, a crunch accompanying this overland move, uh, sounds and the, the jingling of rock breakers chain mail <laughs> as you guys make your way uh, across the road. You get, I don't know, uh, a couple hours out of town when I need you to give me a perception check. Shit, I'm going to regret leaving town on one HP. Probably. Is Pochi's voice just in our heads, or can chat hear that? I, I don't know. <laughs> and, oh, a d20. I roll a 19. Okay. You guys are just walking through the through the snow, just like, doo-doo-doo, doing your thing, when there is a terrifying... Oh, yeah. Should have warned you about the Yetis. <laughs> and this nine-foot-tall white snow bear comes roaring out of the woods, claws in hands, swinging them at Rockbreaker. Um, you guys are both fuck, taken fuck, by... Fuck, holy fuck, shit, fuck, by surprise. Fuck, fuckity fuck. <laughs> as Rockbreaker gets critical by the... No! And then no, I can't... Them as well. I can't lose Rockbreaker. <laughs> He takes nine points of damage. Oh, God. Sleep. I... There's no way this creature has less than... How many points can I put to sleep? Two d4 hit dice. I might be able to do it. Um... Da, 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 da. Yeah, let's do it. All right. Uh, uh, do you want initiative? initiative rolls. Yes. So the creature comes in and takes both of his claws and just like slashes through Rockbreaker's chainmail gets ripped open. He needs to make a saving throw versus death, which he fails. Fuck. Um, the location is six. The severity is insignificant. Okay. Um, Rockbreaker still alive? Yes. All right. Uh, I'm just trying to remember his stats. You mean you didn't write them down? Uh, I've remembered them. We're good. We're you're, good. you're DMing like Ryan over there. Or are you DMing like Neil? Maybe, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> um, give me them initiatives. I roll a four. Ooh, very good. Time. So I'm casting sleep, trying to hide behind Rockbreaker. Um, okay, and... Okay, you go first. All right, let's roll that wild surge. Give me that d20. Uh, d20, 10. Nope, that, no, nothing too exciting. That's probably, that is it. that's probably, yeah. Zero level change. At zero. Um, all right, here's the roll that matters. Let's see if I can do it. Five, does it have five hit die or less? The Yeti goes, Boom. And crumples into the... Oh, wait. I forgot to give make a saving throw. Hold on. Oh, wait. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He gets a saving throw. But at least I know he's got less than five hit dice. Nope. Nope. He does not crumple into the snow. He wavers for a moment. Drops his headphones as Rockbreaker swings his axe. Woo. Um, actually, I'm just going to let you roll Rockbreaker's attacks. So that way it's more interesting. He attacks sure. at plus four with his battle axe. That's a hit. Uh, battle axe, is it 2d4 versus large, or is it d6? d8, I believe, against large. And he rolls at d8 plus 4 for damage. Wow, he's specialized? Battle axe? He's a fucking fighter. Of course he's specialized. What well, sort of fighter would not be plenty of suboptimal fighters over the years. I assume that some random NPC... He's not some random NPC. He's an, an adventurer, man. All right, 6 points of damage. All right. Yeah, d8, cool. Six points of damage to the white bear, the snow bear. Uh, probably has five who dice. recoils in pain uh, as then he makes his attacks against Rockbreaker. Both claws come out at him, and Rockbreaker bats one to the side as the other claw like wisps harmlessly over his head. And we both roll initiative again. Give me a d10 plus 7 for Rockbreaker and whatever you want for yourself. Rockbreaker gets an 11. 
I am going to get an eight. Okay. Uh, do I go first? Uh, yes, it goes first. All right. YOLO. I'm going to leave my quarterstaff in the snow as I produce a phallic-shaped uh, cloth-wrapped package from my bag and withdraw a flaming blade from it as I circle around the bear, hoping that it's distracted by Rockbreaker. And its run... eyes perk up at the flames oh, and it focused on you. So it rotates? Oh yeah, it rotates as you rotate. Shit. Uh, which does actually present Rockbreaker with an attack of opportunity. Um, at um, plus two? At plus two, so d20 plus six. Ten, not gonna do it. No. Uh, the... I'm gonna get myself killed. Snow bear. Damn it, damn it, damn it. your attack. Um... Does it look like a, oh so split second decision? Does it look like it's focused on the sword or on me? Uh, perception like check. It's a, a, what? Perception check. All right. So this is like a this is a quick second decision to decide whether I'm okay. So I focused on the sword or at me, and is it fear? It focused on the sword. And does it look like it's fear or intrigue? It's on. I mean, you can't tell. It's not. It's not a human face. All right, I'm making my attack against the creature. For a second there, I was, shit. Do it. Two, no, two. Oh, no, no. For a you, second there, you I was thinking of- flaming sword wildly, uh, and it gets nowhere near the- right. I play off, I try and wave more wildly and see if I can just play it off like it was meant to be a distraction. No. The, the Yeti leaps at you, attacking no, you with both no. of its claws. All right, I'm going to pull out my dice and start rolling a new character. <laughs> Two fours on their its attacks. You got very lucky, Ryan. There's no way I could be this lucky. I don't believe you. <laughs> All right. I mean, you haven't necessarily been that lucky yet. The ice creature almost yeah. killed you. Did max well, I damage guess, on I guess attack. my point, uh, yeah. I have four max HP. I'm at one HP. Every mm -hmm. attack is potentially lethal. <laughs> yeah. Right. Anyway, it swipes at you, but it, the, the fire seems to be keeping it at bay. And then Rockbreaker comes in from the back. With a back attack and a two. Oh, but he gets and a second attack. He does get a second attack. Aw, yeah. 22. Ooh. Uh, that does not clear by 10, but it is a hit. 10 points of damage. The battle axe finds it purchase in the back of the snow bear, and it crumples to the ground and falls forward. That's it? It's dead? I look stunned. Rockbreaker puts a foot on the back of the snow bear and rips out his axe and goes, well then, that's some creature. Should have warned you about that, but I assume you've heard the rumors. Yeah, I heard all the rumors. You okay? I step forward to inspect his wounds. He pulls oh, like apart his chainmail and looks at his shoulder and goes, it's mighty... Ugh gonna have to get to a doctor <clears throat> unless um, you happen to be a doctor you a surgeon buddy uh, I am not I do have herbalism and alchemy but I don't have anything prepared any poultices or anything um, so I I'll spend a few minutes dressing the wound if you would like me to yeah and so I'll at least get it bandaged I do have cloth handkerchiefs okay um so i'll use a couple of that those aren't covered in poop that are not and i subtracted the poop covered cloth handkerchiefs okay. why was there poop oh there was there was there dung the staff got stuck in poop because you were <laughs> going through the sewer oh the sewers yeah yeah yeah, yeah. um i will sheathe my sh flaming short sword and remind him again that he uh, should keep this on the down low Gospin, Gospin to Dagon is one thing, but we shouldn't have rumors going around that I am what I am. Not a lot of people like to advertise that they have a flaming sword in their back pocket. <laughs> exactly. I can understand your, uh, I can understand you not wanting to tell people about this. Oh, fuck, it stings. Yeah. Huh. 
So, uh, tell me, boy, where'd you find that flaming sword of yours? <clears throat> In a goblin cave, of all places. Goblin cave? Sounds awful mysterious. Yes, indeed. Goblin stole it from some chump who, I don't know where he got it, but he was in no position to be wielding this. Nor am I for that matter, but I'll keep my uh, eye on it for the time being. What are you, uh... it's, it's back in its, in its bag, right. by the, in the bag, by the way. What do you yeah, say you uh, trade me that there sword for a couple months <laughs> of service? <laughs> How about a couple hundred years? You crazy? <laughs> I'll give you a year of service for um, that sword. Faithful service. I ain't gonna let you down. I'm shrugging this off as I'm inspecting the snow bear. Uh, you've patched him up as best as possible. Give him some herbs. To I don't think I have it. any. I mean, I don't have anything in my pocket aside from the no, poison, okay. poisoned right. star leaf. <laughs> I've got some butter, some rancid butter. Yeah. <laughs> um, what is, um, is there any any more defining features about this creature now that I'm up close? It has short, cur uh, heavily curly hair. Mm -hmm. um, it's all white. The, the skin underneath is, you know, fairly normal bear skin color, whatever that would be. I don't know if you shave a bear. I don't know what color its skin is. But you can look up pictures of bears that have mange. Is that what it's called? Where they lose their fur mange and they get itchy. They look pretty sad, actually. I think it's pretty dark. It's like blackish skin, depending okay. on. So it's got like blackish skin underneath of uh, this uh, very curly white hair that's a little bit fluffy, but a little bit wiry. Um, its claws are these long black kind of crescent yeah. things that look like they retract like a cat's Coach, he's claw. so quick with the, with the mangy bears. <laughs> that was seriously like 10 seconds and he's already you, sending oh, links with mangy bears. Posting mangy bear pictures? He's just like waiting on my every word. What, what does Ryan tell me to research on Google? <laughs> All right. Um, Fuzzy was a bear. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so it kind of looks like that underneath. It's got cat-like claws that are retractable, it looks like, but they're also long, and they look like they're made out of uh, some sort of black bone or something. Maybe like a, a, a velociraptor claw from Jurassic Park. I'm going to quickly um, chop yeah, off like some claws. Okay, you hack them off with your flaming sword. Yeah. Um, and now you have, I mean, do you pack off the whole paw or just like the claws? Uh, I think I just want the claws, but I'll probably get a little finger with me when, it, when I'm a thing, yeah. little finger yeah. with it. Or can I just chop Ooh. off the claw? Yeah, you, you can chop them off, not a problem. Your flaming sword is quite effective. Yeah, so I've got a few talons. Snow bear talon. And they're not, talons are from birds, right? These are claws. Snow bear. Mm. Yeah, I guess it would be a claw. All right. And then rock breaker moves at moving rate six. I'll ponder my weight as we continue on. Mm -hmm. All right, you guys uh, keep moving and you trudge through the snow for a few more miles um, until you come across a oh, yeah uh, rock breaker spots it ahead. Give me a perception check. Maybe you spot it before him. Actually, twenty-eight. I spot. Yeah, you actually spot it way before him. Down I the road, away. Rock breaker. You see uh, three of those ice crystals dancing oh. together on the middle of the path. I stop, rock breaker, and I point them out. He spots them and goes, "What are they?" I don't know. Ice grenades, but one of them blew up on me yesterday, just outside a uh, marmon, and I point to the gaping wound in my shoulder. We best steer clear. You get too close and. And then I start rambling about how I think they're these magically enchanted constructs and they're somehow associated with this evil wizard that's causing the storm. I hope I'm just starting all sorts of crazy rumors about what, what is causing this weather. Because <laughs> yeah. I'm just making this shit up. <laughs> so but, you, know, you guys... Dungeons and Dragons, there's, there's some stereotypes you can count on. Yeah, and yeah, I then mean, that's how theories get created. Someone's like, I think it might be a magical construct, you know? Mm -hmm. I, I think the smallest divisible piece in the world is is an atom. I don't think it gets smaller than that. And then later on, someone's like, oh, it's a little bit smaller. You know, so you're like, I think they're magical constructs. And maybe later you'll find out that they're 
something else, but this is a start, you know? You gotta start somewhere. But just like in particle physics, the only way to find out what it actually is, is to blow it to pieces. Mm -hmm. Just destroy it and look at the remains. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. All right. We're gonna build ourselves a Rob Ryan Collider. <laughs> just collide D and D monsters at high speed. And <laughs> find out more information about them. That's basically what we do here. Do you remember right. the show BattleBots? Yes. Of course. Why don't we have that anymore? Uh, I don't know. Did they ever try a reboot? Got I don't know. You never... built a BattleBot once upon a time. <laughs> sort high of. School, right. Yeah, well, yeah, not exactly BattleBots. Uh, it's called First Robotics, if anyone's curious to look it up. It's actually a huge like national competition in high school robotics teams. But you fought you know, robots the... against other robots. Yeah, well, you, it's like, skill. yeah, you don't break the robots, though. They're too damn expensive, and it's also, like, mm. educational. So they're, like, robots mm. playing basketball. Or... Mm. The one we did was, like, robots putting inflatable inner tubes on hooks faster than the opposing team puts... And their inner tubes on the same hooks. See, you have so it's like invent... BattleBots, but you no no flamethrowers. But you have to like in install in it some sort of like projectile system to like deflate your opponent's inner tubes. That or was something not allowed. Like that. <laughs> that was explicitly against the rules. <laughs> but you can't do like interfere. I mean, it, it was like it was like, bas like basketball type rules, you know, where you're competing, but you can't actively like smack your opponent with a battle axe. Hmm. But you know, you can put your wave your hands in front of them or whatever. Did you did you deflate your inner tubes so your battle bot could grip it better? No, no, I am not the Patriots. Is that who did that? I actually don't follow yeah. football to know which team got in trouble. Okay. Your team is in the the Super Bowl. You well, I know it wasn't. Yeah. My yeah. team. Your uh, your team now. <laughs> the Adelite. Yep. 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 Okay. Uh, anyway, back to the game. Yep. The... So I steer clear of these ice yes. constructs. Do you, so you, like, walk around them through the woods? Yeah, I try. Uh, sure, yeah. That's, if that seems to be the only way to get. Like, I, I want to stay uh, hundreds of feet away from them if I can. Okay, so you, you guys steer... head off into the woods and try and circle around back. Yeah. Um... Um, I'm going to light a torch in my offhand. Okay. It, it is pretty dark underneath the tree cover once you get off the road. Actually, the road has, like, a lot of the trees have been cut away, which gives you uh, more sunshine coming through. But once you get off the road significantly, there's so much snow cover that it's really dark underneath the, the woods. And you do need a torch to kind of light your way. Okay. I don't actually have a torch, but I will light my lantern. And okay, you light your lantern. Yeah. That's enough to see by. Uh, but it also makes you a glowing target in the middle of darkness. Um, and you know, w how dark... I pull the hood down on my lantern, seeing how glowing I am. Mm -hmm. Right, I can do that? I can just turn it off? Yeah. Probably shed turn it off. light, but it is a hooded lantern, so I can just turn it off and keep it burning. Because I start having right, second You proceed to go so, around them. Yeah, so I assume Rock Rockbreaker's a dwarf. He can see just fine, right? Yeah, he can see pretty well in the darkness. I mean, at least for the first, what is it, 60 feet or so? This yeah. is not a problem. Yeah. So he leads the way, and you follow directly just a few feet behind him, uh, keeping your eyes on him to guide your path. Um, and without the light, you, you manage to make it back to the road some ways past where the ice crystals are. When you get back to the road and look back, you don't even see them anymore. Mm -hmm. um, and you make the rest of the way to, uh, what is this? There's town called. Lurks and without incident. All right. And so we burst into the tavern, uh, expecting to be greeted as heroes as we regale them with tales of the snow bear we just slayed. I produce the bloody claws. Show them There off. is all sorts of chatter, and the both of you get offers from about half a dozen people to go hunt down the snow bear that took their sheep or took their cow or whatever. Um, you are inundated with requests for assistance. Rockbreaker gives you a a look like a hmm? um, make a pretty I'll... penny. If you don't mind delaying your quest a little bit. You want to go? I said after that, and I point to his shredded chainmail. You want to go back for more? 
I won't be taken by surprise again. I could use a new coat. All right. I mean, how? When it's, it's going to snow? If it's going to snow, I mean, we can. Oh yeah. No one's oh, yeah. going to get hurt if we uh we t take a couple days off to go hunting bears. I'm in no hurry. Let's hunt some bears. Uh, right. So we'll yeah. I'm a, so after this, I'm gonna we'll meet you back here a little bit later though. He says, and uh, I got some business to attend to in Lurksund. Unless you have immediate need of my services. No, the night is yours. Um, we can discuss plans in the morning. All right. He jogs off and disappears into the town. Somewhere. I make. Sh I check to make sure my magic short sword's still there. Your magic short sword is still there. The lump is still jutting out of my out of my backpack. Uh, you just, talk to just, a couple of people. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, just and the paranoia over here. You, you have three offers, three real offers. There's a couple of people that are seem a little sketchy, and you're like, I don't know if I want to deal with this person. They sound weird. But you mm -hmm. have three people that approach you, and you think they probably have the money to back up what their words are. Mm -hmm. One of them has had a couple of his cows taken. He suspects by these snow bears. One has had a half his flock of sheep taken, again, suspected by snow bears. Mm -hmm. And the third had sent out his two sons to go find some of his missing pigs, mm. and his sons have not returned. Well. The sons left yesterday, and they were supposed to come back yesterday as well, but they did not. I'll ask which direction he sent his sons, or where he last spotted them. Sent them northward. I mean, I, I, I sent them, but they they really wanted to go with themselves. I really just okayed their their ambitions, and I I'm regretting it something awful. Yeah. My youngest boy ain't walking yet, so if these guys don't come back, I ain't gonna have no help on my farm. Then again, my farm is gonna pretty much die if the snow doesn't stop, so I won't need help. But my wife, she's upset in all sorts of tears. I had to go through four stillbirths before we got those boys to go through more her body can't take much more but you know women that's what they're good for pumping out new ones burps all right i'm actually just going to rack these guys for information um i'll probably give them all hope if i can i'm not too concerned with the money actually i mostly just want the experience for slaying these snow bears <laughs> and the glory um so i probably won't even mention money i'll let rock breaker figure that out tomorrow if none of them just like outright say how much they're willing to pay. Look, the missing. guy who's missing his cows offers you fi uh, 50 silver. And the guy's like, no, no, go get the ones that got my sheep. I'll give you 55 silver. Mm -hmm. And the guy's like, well, my boys are gone. I don't have much money, but I'll, I'll give you 30 silver and a horse. <laughs> and the other two are like, I'll, I'll give you a cow. And the other <laughs> guy says, you don't have any cows. And he's like, Shut up. I'll find a cow. Just get them. They all, all seem right. very... Yeah. You know, so I'll, I'll really say something to the effect of all... Yeah. Why don't you just... Why don't you pool whatever you can afford and offer a bounty on it on a head for each of these each of these critters? And I will do my darndest to bring your sons back. Or... Yes, I'll, I'll bring them back. Okay. They, they all mumble in agreement. It appears uh, all of their farms were on the north side of town. Interesting. Okay. And they can show you, they, they each offer to show you where the tracks were. The boys were sent out yesterday. The sheep were taken four days ago. The cows were taken this morning. Okay. All right. Um, I'm not going to do anything about it till the morning, but I'll chat with them through the night and hopefully have them buy me drinks. Um, can I get an in-room for myself? Um, yes. Hand rock breaker? I don't, I'll buy rock. Does it seem like this place is going to sell out or is there room enough for everybody? No, the, the, it seems like the tavern is pretty empty. You can buy private rooms for both of you for half price. Um, I'll buy one for myself and I will, uh, I won't get one for rock breaker yet, but if he shows back up, I guess I will. How much are rooms? Uh, half price, so you can get a room for 25 copper. Nice. Um, pay. All right. 
So that, I'll just pay for myself right now. And if Rockbreaker shows back up tonight, I'll buy a second. Um, and I'm going to see if I can fetch a surgeon or a doctor or a vet. <laughs> um, yes, you get directions to a doctor's house. All right. Um, I will go pay him a visit. Okay. You show up at his little hut, um, and he he's inside brewing some sort of foul-smelling concoction. Um, the the door is slightly ajar, and as you walk in, like the the room is very warm, and you see there's like a huge fire in the middle of the room, over which there's a large black cauldron. And he's got a big like you know two and a half foot long spoon that he's stirring the ca uh, cauldron with, and he waves you in as he sees you at the door. Come on in, boy. Uh, greetings, Mister. I have it's doctor actually. <laughs> Well, greetings, Doctor. I approach the cauldron and give it a whiff. Can I roll an alchemy check to yeah. identify what's going on in here? Please do. Alchemy or herbalism? Matt. If you have alchemy, then roll me an alchemy. It's not even an actual proficiency, but you let me take it. Do it. Two watts. 33. What's it smell like? 33? You motherfucker. I'm a um, smart guy. <laughs> It smells like your everyday run-of-the-mill healing POTUS uh, pack, just mm -hmm. done in bulk. Um, so you've got some some rosemary to cover up the worst of the smell, combined with some urine mixed with some, you know, whatever other, you know, uh, willow bark and some, uh, some fen root and, you know, a couple of flax seeds in there for good measure. And then you, mm. you add some goat's milk to thicken it up and a couple of eggs. Mmm, rosemary, a nice touch. Uh, I find the, the patients are often quite pesky when they don't like the smell of things. So yeah, give it a little rosemary and they, they don't complain as much. Well, you'll have no complaints from me. I need to be stitched up. And I got a, oh. got a dwarf that'll be needing it too. Um, Show me the, the place where you've been hurt, boy. Right, I will. I mean, I've I had a perf. I had a nice white gray robe, and now it's there's a huge blood stain right here. So I'm imagining it's pretty obvious. Yeah, <laughs> right, but take, I will take like, your clothes off. I'll sit down. My robe and pile my stuff off to the side and okay. let him at you it. Take your pants off too. We got to give you a full checkup. Uh, I, what? <laughs> Did he actually say that? He chuckles, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. <laughs> all right, all right. All right, he Almost looks at you, there. sniffs it, goes, oh, looks like a little dagger wound here. Not a problem. He takes some of that poultice out, slops it into a little bowl, sets it in like a, a cup of snow that's like melting. And when well, that cools, we'll, we'll rub it in there nice and good. And he goes out and finds himself a needle and, threads it with some stuff and dip, you know, sticks it over a fire for a little bit to sterilize it, takes some of the poultice and just like slops it in your wound and then stitches it up. Yeah, uh, because that's what you do with poultices. 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 You yeah, don't drink them. Nope. <laughs> slop them on the wound. And then he applies a, um, it's not a cloth. It looks like some sort of reed or some sort of like flat grass that's been woven into a patch. Uh, he puts it over you and then slop some extra poultice on top of that and then says now, now hold that there for a few minutes and uh, it'll eventually dry and stick to you let it stick as long as possible it'll help you out i hold and i will ask him how much his services cost after the fact probably a mistake but uh 10 silver all right i cannot 10 silver thank you kindly uh, send your dwarf buddy over here and I'll take care of them too. Um, you, I take it um, you head back to the inn that you're staying at. I'll I'll go ahead and prepay for Rockbreaker. Okay. I wonder he's probably got his own coin, but um, that's what Fenric would do. Okay. Uh, um, okay. All right. So I head back to the inn. I pull my robe back on and grab my stuff, and head back to the inn. You arrive back at the inn, and you find Rockbreaker there, 
greedily gulping down a flagon of hard alcohol. All right. Um, all right. I give him a pat on the back. I say, I found a healer. Yeah. Oh, thank you. But uh, I've already had my wounds seen too. That's what That's I what ran off to do. Wounds. Damn it. I, he's, they're covered with his clothing. The chain mail still looks broken, but it, there's like some sort of wrapping and bandage on, on the existing wound. Well, shit. I already paid and everything, and I have a seat at the bar. So it looks like uh, these boys tell us we have a deal. We're, they're going to give us <clears throat> 20 you, silver a head for the them? snow bears. Mm-hmm. Sounds about right. And um, I think 50 silver and a horse if we bring back some boys. They're dead, Mm -hmm. maybe less. (laughs) Well, we bring back some boys or any livestock. We'll uh, get what they can give us. We can bring back both the boys. We can get ourselves a horse. It'll be a good fine prize, and we'll have to figure out how to split it. (laughs) Right in half. It's the only way. (laughs) Down the middle, so so no one gets gets the ass of the deal. Well, personally, I do prefer the ass end of the horse. Head's all bony. (laughs) <laughs> I laugh, not sure whether he's joking or not. Um, okay, and um, the evening passes. Um, how Let's does see. that pull, does that healing work? Uh, give me a D three for the HP you regain the next morning. Does that actually work, even if it's not addressed immediately after the fight? Or yeah. Just... Damn it! Only one. Okay. Oh yeah, this was I guess an extra day. No, this was this is that night because you got wounded yeah. this morning. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it's it's within a day. It's fine. You can apply a healing proficiency within a day of receiving wounds, or is it? I'm sorry, I missed that. I was wasn't sure how a healing proficiency worked. Uh, healing healing and herbalism proficiency, you can make poultices, or you know apply them properly, mm-hmm. which will give you D three to the wound after. This is just a house if you have like, though, isn't it? this is a house rule. Yeah, if you have like three wounds, each one of them for three HP, you could use three poultices, one on each wound. But if you Every have like one wound, just, just no, 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 just the first day, and from then on, it's normal healing. All right. Yeah, yeah. If it's more than twenty-four hours old, you can no longer use a poultice on it. I like it. Mm-hmm. So right. it, it kind of helps with small wounds heal more easily than large wounds. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Cool. Cool. Um, I think with that, we'll head into our second break and go bear hunting when we return. Okay. Pochi, take us away. Is that a...